The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the February 2nd, the uh, wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four ship, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. And if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. Send it early, if you would. And in that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tigers, then will any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A slightly mixed bag out here. The only indice, U.S. indice that we track that's trading to the downside is the Russell 2000 off 18 points, about 9 tenths of a percent. Dow's up 122, 3 tenths. S&P 7 tenths, that's 32. NASDAQ 106 tenths, 91 points. Semis are up 1 and 8 tenths percent. They're the leader out here. 64 buckaroonies to the upside. Gold's up 7 bucks. Silver up 15 pennies. Light sweet crude trade now to 87.77. Someone ring the cash register out there. Natural gas up 2 buckaroonies, 46 percent. Is that right? Holy shnikes. That is a move out there. Let's go to our first caller. It is Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing? Uh, this morning still for you? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. I, I really appreciate you taking the call. I always enjoy our conversations that we have. Yes, me too. Me too. So today's question, I'm not sure what it is. So uh, go ahead and pull it out of the hat and uh, tell me what we're going to chat about. There's kind of a multitude of, of uh, different things I want to put together and then I'd, I'd like to get your thoughts and opinions on, on that. what I'm going to talk to you about. Sure. So it's, it's really just kind of a general thesis on, you know, we have the seasonal patterns that you've talked about. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. We have, uh, you know, the VIX two days in a row now, you know, with the rate of change over 10%. We're now below the 50-day, and we don't know where the close is going to be. Yes. Uh, we had all the patterns that lined up the other day, you know, with the, with the TD9, the AD equals CD patterns down. I mean, all these things kind of coming together. Um, and there's no question it's been a great trading bottom so far. I just want to get your thoughts on if you think this is still potentially just a balance. I mean, it seems like things are adding up to where it could turn out to be something more than just, you know, your garden variety and little, little bounce off the bottom. So, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a great question, and the reason why it's a great question is because I ask myself that uh, every few minutes, <laughs> you know, in trying, to, in trying <laughs> to figure it out. But So let's just start with where you first, the, the first thing that you mentioned, and, and that, folks, is the seasonal pattern. So here we have, over the last 86 years, uh, this is the seasonal pattern for the Dow. Oftentimes, it kind of uh, uh, really sticks to this general area, not necessarily to the dates that I have out here, uh, but the dates are really more of a reference to use as we get into these time frames and you're looking for bottoms. So up at the top, the average turn date for the Dow is January 6th. I believe this year, Brent, it was the 5th, 4th or 5th. Uh, that generated the uh, topping pattern. So what I like to do, folks, is uh, as these dates or these areas come into being, I like to see some type of if it's a high. I like to see a topping pattern. If it's a low, for example, this shows that the average uh, cycle says that June, the, the end of the end of June, the end of January is where we see that bottom. In fact, 
from a seasonal standpoint, it's the bottom for the year. So that's really important because we do have a valid bottom. So uh, that was last Monday, January 24th. And so one thing, Brent, that we can use as a marker, if we do see price take out the lows from uh, you know last month, from uh, January 24th, then I think we can, of course, it depends when it would do that, but then I think we can assume that the seasonal pattern you know, is put off to the side. So that's where I would leave that here. So because we have that bottom, because we've had that nice springboard out here, there is a possibility that, yes, this could still be following along the seasonal pattern to move higher into the middle part of May. So any questions here, Brent, about this chart before we maybe move on to the next area of trying to figure this out? I guess my only other thought there would be that, <clears throat> excuse me, we uh, we made the kind of the initial bottom on would have been not this last Monday, but the Monday before. Yes. We basically yes, that's, came that, back down and tested that bottom. And even on the uh, Russell extended beyond it, but didn't close there. Correct. And so that could potentially be the test, I suppose. But I just that's the other thing that something to think about, I guess. Yes, it is. So it's a possibility. So then the questions are, so then you went, you went back, and we'll come back to this. You went back and you mentioned the spot bottle tunic. So let's go ahead and pull that up on our screen now here. And what we know about this, well, what we know about the spot bottle tunic, folks, and the reason why I use that 50-day exponential moving average is because if you go back, so the bottom plot on this chart is the spot bottle tunic. The red line is the 50-day. The blue line is the actual closing price. And the yellow and green squares, rectangles that I have on my uh, uh, the upper portion of the screen, which is the S&P 500, tells you what the market generally does when price is above or below the 50-day exponential moving average. So when it's above the 50-day exponential moving average, those yellow rectangle box areas show that the market moves higher. Yesterday, we closed just below the 50-day. If we get two consecutive closes below that, Brent, then that would suggest to me that what the spot volatility is going to do is go try to target the lower Bollinger Band, which is 1772. That, I would think, would remain the pattern unless we see something else pop up. But right now, there's nothing else that I've got showing some kind of top, let's say, on a daily time frame. So I would use that as a gauge. So right now, to answer the question, you know, is the market likely to move higher or not, it does depend upon where the spot volatility closes today. And you mentioned that. If it does close back above the 50-day level, which is uh, 2217, then that's telling us that yesterday's move to the downside was a false signal for you and I. And then that could be saying that, okay, maybe we, maybe the top is in. So that is one possibility. But if the spot volatility closes for two consecutive days below this, it would suggest to me that we have more to go in the rally to the upside. Any questions about either these two uh, slides that we've taken a look at? No, that's great. Thank you, Steve. So you'd also mentioned that we did have two consecutive one-day rates of change below minus 10%. Folks, that is shown with those two green arrows on my screen out here. We have had that occur in the past. I don't have anything that sticks out right now on the data that I'm showing here. No, I do. I've got one right here. So there was a two consecutive time period. Was there two? There was none. So I don't have... I don't have two consecutive days. I don't know why I have that, got that error and I'm going to get rid of it. But I don't think that that means anything more like super special bottom rent. I just think it's a, an initiation signal that says that we continue to move higher. Seasonal pattern, spot volatility index, and close below the 50-day says, yes, we should move higher. So, Brent, do me a favor. Hold on through this breakout here. When we come back, we're going to take a look at what could be the real problems in the market. Steve Rhodes with Brent in Martinez, California. We'll be back in a few minutes. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, Education. Investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with Brent and Martinez, California. We're just talking about the markets in general here, and uh, specifically uh, because Brent is very familiar with the uh, seasonal patterns out here, where the Dow typically forms a bottom in January, and that's a bottom for the low. And the question is, is, is it possible that that is the case out there? And I can't rule it out, Brent. Um, you know, it, it has that potential. But uh, if I take a look at the market moving lower from, you know, the January 4th, 5th time frame into the uh, 24th out here, and I, what I've got is that, that began where this red arrow is. So on January 4th out here, uh, that's when the market started moving lower in earnest. What we did not see is, let's say, a typical flight to quality. We can see that the 30-year Treasury continued to move lower out there. So no flight to quality there. If we just take a look at uh, Goldilocks in that same time period, there was no flight to quality there either. The U.S. dollar index did move up. So if we go back to the January 4th time frame, you know, it, it actually moved lower for a bit until it uh, found a bottom around the mid -gen. So no real tr tr totally total flight to quality out there. So why am I bringing that up? I'm bringing that up because when I started taking a look at where was money going, could I find a place where money was going? And the, re the way that I would do that, Brent, was I created this table. If you give me a moment, we'll get to it. Now, there's going to be a lot of data on here, uh, and it's this little rate of change. And this table here, folks, allows me to take each of these instruments. So I've got all the sectors. I've got all the indices, many of the indices. I've got currency pairs, commodities, um, you know, and, and what's going on around the globe so you've got etfs each of you can create the same uh, uh set of uh, uh the, the same table out here and Brett, what i was looking for is there any was money flowing into any one specific area and so i've got this broken down by a one day time period the next of that would be a five day time period or what would be the equivalent of a week then i have a four week period with the equivalent of month then i've got a 12 month period the equivalent of the last 12 months to figure out the year and then i've got the year to date out here so if i just look at the year to date and i look for any type of uh, flight to safety flight to quality any place where there might be a concentration of capital there's just nothing that sticks out here so then I went through, I go through this process, say, well, if there's no flight to quality, then what was really going on in the marketplace? What was, I realized that the seasonal patterns say we make a high in January, we make a low, you know, high in the early part of January and a low in the end of January out there. 
But there still needs to be something fundamental that uh, moves markets. It just doesn't do it because the seasonal patterns out there. And is that making any sense? What I'm oh, no, it trying? does. No, it does. I and mean, if you kind of mentioned this before, that you think it was more of a potentially like a li- liquidation event that was you know going on and with that with the way it was coming down. So. That's right. That's right. So so Stevie believes, based upon seeing no flight to quality, uh, no concentration of capital. What was really going on was a liquidation. So what is it that could create a liquidation event? We didn't have any hedge funds blowing up or anything along those lines. So what could be the cause of the liquidation event? Well, the and so first, some people would say, oh, Stevie, that's easy. The liquidation event was caused by the Fed caused by the Fed from the standpoint that they're going to raise interest rates and that's what's going to croak the market. Okay, plausible. We hear people say that, but we hear people say that and don't really provide any kind of factual information. So, you know me, I like the factual information. What do the charts say? This is a chart that goes back for two decades. It's a monthly chart, so we're cutting out some of the noise here. But what we do know in the most recent time that we saw interest rates rise was back in 2016. And what did the market do? Well, the Dow is at the top. Interest rates are at the bottom. That's the Fed uh, funds rate out there. Markets went higher. Go back to 2003, the last time before this where we had a significant rise in interest rate. What did the S&P or the Dow in this case here, what did the Dow do? It moved higher. So I think that I can comfortably say that first it's factually incorrect for people to say the Fed raising interest rates is what's going to croak the market. That just doesn't it just doesn't hold up. So so I don't believe that this was the cause of the markets moving lower. Make sense? It does. Yes. So then what is it? And I really started to reveal this when I did the segment with Tom Monday afternoon. And, and so I'm just pulling up those these slides. So, you know, whether the language. Is, so the one possible answer is war. Because what so here's what if you go back traditionally throughout history, even before there were stock markets out there, um, if you were the aggressor and you had holdings of the opponent that you were going after, what typically happens? You liquidate that. You liquidate that. And so that makes sense to me with regard to what we saw taking place. Also, it's what's going on in the news, Uh, you know, whether it's the whether it's Russia and Ukraine, whether it's the U.S. in China or China in Taiwan. I mean, there's stuff all over the place out here that could create problems. So it appears to me that what we saw going on was the preparation for war. And that there were liquidation events going on with sovereign wealth funds, maybe it was oligarchs, whatever it was. At this stage here, the only factual things that I can find, now I can't prove this, but what I can prove to you is that those folks would understand the beginning of every war out there, what happens to the markets. Again, this takes us back to 1950 and the Korean War. It moves lo- it moves lower. And I'm not going to talk about the bottoms that form and how that happens, but there's the Korean War. Here's World War II. Here's the Persian Gulf War out here. Here's Operation Iraqi Freedom. Uh, here is the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, and so it is, I believe, that it is war. So here is the deal. If, if you are a person that believes that the U.S. is likely to be dragged into war out here, knowing that on an annual basis we have a TD9 count top out here, that formed last year out there, bar, the bar following bar number nine out here, um, then I would suggest uh, taking some appropriate action to safeguard your portfolio. Now, I don't I can't guarantee that we're going to war, but this is the only plausible thing that I'm able to come up with here, Brent, that would then say that even if this was a seasonal low inside the market, that as soon as that were to take place, we're going to see a move to the downside. And that is really the best that I can come up with. Um, and I don't know which way it's going to go. I wish I could see into the future, but that's that's how I put this whole thing together. What what? Uh, and pull it apart. I you know I'm, this is this is a discussion. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm wrong. Just you know, again going through stock charts, trying to understand why they're doing what they're doing and then what it means, and then what action do we take? Yeah, I think the one thing I've tried to do. I mean, I have a decent cash position. But I'm also trying to take advantage of the fact that there's been some, I mean, fantastic trading to be done in these with the volatility that we're having. And I guess the one adjustment that maybe I've made is I'm just doing, 
most of the trades I'm doing, they're, they're kind of quick trades. I'm, I'm doing all options. I'm not even putting up. I'm not buying individual equities and hanging on to them. Yes. I'm strictly doing it through options, and I'm doing I'm, I'm doing quick trades where I don't. I'm not, once I've made my money, I kind of get out. I move on to the next thing. and So I'm just trying to be more nimble and not necessarily going for the big long-term, you know, buy and hold strategy at the moment. Well, and I, and I think that's very advisable at at this stage here because I mean I, I would first ask if you if you again if you have a belief that there's a possibility that the U.S. will somehow be dragged into some type of war skirmish military action or what have you, and it really depends on how much we would get dragged into that. But look, today, uh, what we're sending troops, um, you know, over into uh, Europe or what have you. Not, not, you know, that, that, so I know how the markets respond. I don't know if we're going to war, but it's the only thing that logically makes sense to me. Hey, Brett, we're going to a break. You're welcome to hold on. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the tiger's den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California. We're talking about the markets overall in general. Uh, Brent, I didn't want to cut you off right there. Uh, you know, as I was. Uh, so, any questions about the, kind of that last segment or any thoughts, additional thoughts? No, I just I really appreciate you taking the time, Steve, to kind of talk it through, and we'll just keep watching it like we do every day and <laughs> see what it does. And I just think there are some things that, of course, there's always both sides of the trade. So, 
But yes. I see some and, things that, you know, they're coming together, you know, showing that it could keep going for a while. We'll, we'll watch it and see. Yes. And so, you know, I would say that through about um, uh, until early this morning, until about five o'clock this morning, what I just shared with you, I had a ton of conviction behind. But then what happened early this morning? Well, I sat in front of my computers and I took a look at this screen. And what is this screen? This is a screen that has the weekly profile. So what we know is that when price closes below the bottom of weekly profile gives us a change in trend signal. Well, there are new profiles, Brent, that are being attempted to form right now. I've got using my advanced Doppler tool out here. And so we won't have a confirmation of these weekly profiles until uh, Sunday evening. But when you take a look at the profile, it may be hard to see. The left-hand screen here is the ES Mini. And the low of the new profile is below the last low profile. And the high is above the prior high. Brent, that's a message of a market that wants to consolidate sideways. So not a market that says, I'm ready to take off to the downside. If I take a look at the NQ's message, the new profile bottom, again, won't be confirmed until Sunday, is above the prior bottom. And the new high is above the prior high. That's a bullish message. Uh, you know, whether you're using profiles for lower, high, higher high, higher lows and higher highs, or using bars to do that. So the NQ out here, and again, I don't know that the profile will take hold or not. I know what buyers and sellers, where they're attempting to take their positions out here. And then we've got the uh, Dow. The Dow Equity Future Contract is, it just formed a new profile like two weeks ago. It's trying to form another one right now. Its message is kind of, so there's, there's a, I think even the, the technicals aren't necessarily sure what to do out here. So there's there's reason to be or there's reason for me to be a, a bit confused right now I, and so yeah, I just, I just, I, 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 I just always like to share that for I believe that my most important role that I can play for me individually for you out there for everybody that's listening is that from a technical trader standpoint it's incumbent upon us to take new information interpret it and in, in, in suggest what it's going to say to us and so I really won't know about these new profiles until Sunday but here's the other piece of that puzzle. Even though this is what the markets are suggesting to you and the NASDAQ is suggesting, hey, I want to move up to the 16,659 level out there. I do know that how the markets will respond or should respond if there is some type of uh, skirmish or threat. So I think today is the uh, new moon, um, if I'm not mistaken. You know, if there's something, if there's some action that takes place uh, today, we'll see the markets uh, make a beeline to the uh, south out there. Uh, if it doesn't happen today, when it does happen, or if it does happen, then you know you're going to have a pretty decent short signal. Just knowing about historically why what markets do when there's that threat of war or actual war or skirmish or some type of military action out there. So that kind of covers my whole thought process, and I like to have conviction. And I do have conviction I, as far as what happens if a war is going to occur. But whereas yesterday at this time, I would have had more conviction in that this is what's going to happen. Now with these new profiles, I'm rethinking that that overall set of thoughts out there. Okay? Yeah, I think I'm just going to keep, you know, there's been some great trading. Keep doing that. And like you said, just, you know, protect your portfolio and, you know, just, uh, just take it a day at a time. That's all we can do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Brent, always good to speak to you. Thanks so much for the call, and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. All right. Thank you so much, Steve. As always, I just, you know, great talking with you. I really appreciate your help, and you do the same. Have a great day. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon. That sounds great. My pleasure. Hey, I've just got the Google charts up on the screen here in case those folks were wondering, hey, why did Google stop at about the 30, 37 level? The reason is, just take a look. Again, these are the profiles, and that's how important these profiles are for you and I. They provide us with a competitive advantage, and I've always believed a competitive advantage is a good thing to have. So here you've got a bear structured weekly profile, big wide-ranging bar, big volume behind the move out there. But sellers exist where sellers exist. And until they're overrun, all Google's done is made its way up to where those sellers reside. That's at the 30, 37 level. Let's go out to Denver and speak with Ron. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Great, Steve. Uh, 12 degrees here right now, and it's going to get colder tonight. Ooh, anyway, ooh. Uh, I wanted you know, to make I, a that... comment about your war. Uh, to me, the, one of the biggest causes of war is whenever you see the presidential ratings drop, their poll ratings drop. It happened with Clinton, it happened with Bush, and they, they use it as a diversion. And, uh, I, yes, you know, I, I just, uh, that's something to look for. 
Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I You're right. That's a, that's a, that's a set- what I consider a flight to quality. There's yeah. a couple trillion dollars of money out there looking for yield. And WMB Williams just increased their dividend. And it was like five and a half. So this will move it up to about 5.9, which is a great yield. On a, on a solid company, and to me, when a company increases their dividend, that's a real positive signal. So I bought a bunch of calls on it this morning, and I just wondered, what, is, what does it look like technically for you on WMB? So you're about to, uh, so profile-wise, Ron, price is above daily, weekly, monthly profiles. So all of that looks good. The question you and I have got to identify or try to define is, where is price headed to? So I have yes. the monthly chart that's up on the screen here. And so what you know is you're just simply running into an area where for whatever reason, uh, WMB tends to top out. So the next level that you're really watching in this trade here for you is 33.67. You're 30.52, there's no reason for price not to make its way up to that level. And I would say that if price could close above that, certainly on a monthly basis, uh, 33.67, then that is a real positive because what this has in it, I'm just gonna look at the monthly time frame is it has a nice consolidation pattern. And so the consolidation pattern, in essence, that area that we were just talking about, so the top is pretty well defined, the bottom is pretty well defined, and if price can close over 30, 37, then what that's gonna give to both you and I is a target of about 55 bucks, uh, you know, thereabouts, that would be the measured move of the consolidation. Over time, it's a monthly chart that we're looking at. So that's the first thing that I notice or I see when I take a look at WMB. Ron, before I move over to the white background charts, any questions about this? Uh, you said 33057? Uh, 3367. 3367. 3367, okay. Correct. Thank okay. you. Yeah, no, yep. no questions. Okay, so on the daily time frame, we don't have a topping pattern that's in place. It's got a rose momentum indicator signal that's triggered. Needs a bearish reversal candle. I don't see anything here to suggest that price is not going to move higher. So no topping pattern there. The monthly chart, it's really got the same set of patterns out here. So uh, it looks like it wants to move higher. Uh, that was the weekly chart, my apology. The monthly chart also saying that it wants to move higher. So there's nothing here when I pull my white background charts out to suggest anything different than what you and I have already concluded. So watch that 3367 level if you can get above that that's real positive if you can't then it says uh, okay the top of the consolidation was been reached and price could actually pull all the way back down to the bottom of the consolidation okay Ron sure thank you very much appreciate it thank you, you bet and thanks you bet thanks so much for the call and thanks for sharing your observations on uh, wars and uh, when uh, the US typically gets involved so another well, reason we to seem to be concerned. more concerned about the, <laughs> yeah, the foreign I, borders than we are about our southern border I understand. I understand. Hey, Ron, have a, a terrific uh, have a terrific Wednesday, and we'll look forward to speaking to you again. This Thanks. is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We're going to go take a look at uh, copper, it looks like, for Dan in Boston. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So the uh, charts we have up on our screen right now are the charts for uh, copper. So we've got the daily, the weekly, the monthly, and the uh, quarterly time frame chart. So the daily and the weekly, they just simply show wedge patterns out here. They show that price is trading between trend line support, trend line resistance, the same thing. We take a look at the weekly time frame. If I go over and take a look at a monthly or the quarterly, you've got two different types of consolidation patterns that are out there. There's no reason for us to go to the white background charts because we've just had this little choppy sideways issue type consolidation is pattern that is out here with price now uh, Dan yeah, look price is trading above the top of a bearish structured daily profile it's traded and closed above the top of a day a bearish structured daily profile here a couple of different times but where price runs into resistance is right at the top of that descending trend line at some point in time price might try to take that out it hasn't been able to so at this stage here if you're long copper I don't have a reason to suggest to go short other than to say tighten up your stop out there if you're looking to go long, um, then I, I cannot suggest that you buy resistance. Uh, just, uh, just uh, you know, not, maybe maybe you've got a belief that it's going to just take out that resistance. That would be a different thing. But resistance is resistance still gets taken out. Um, you know, copper is, I think, maybe from an intraday trading standpoint, that would be different. But with regard to the larger time frames, daily, weekly, monthly, I take a look at these patterns here. It's almost kind of... Um, I don't know, uninteresting to trade, so to speak, out there. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Dan. And uh, thanks so much for the, yeah, no strong belief. Yeah, really. As far as patterns, the white the white charts I go to, they're not going to show us any pattern. Not with this sideways, uh, choppy type move out here that we've got inside of uh, copper. We've got a couple of questions that have come in by email, and you're welcome. Uh, this first one is coming in from uh, Mike P. Mike says, can we take a look at the uh, long and short term chart on Tesla? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So we'll go take a look at the three panel chart that is. Uh, so we've got daily, weekly, monthly, TSLA. We'll look at our white background charts as well. But here's we take a look at Tesla. What's it doing? Well, it's testing support. Support from a daily standpoint, Mike, and that is the bottom of its daily profile. So that's a level you want to be able to watch. The bottom of this is bullish in structure. The bottom of that profile is 895.33. Today's low has been 889.41. If this holds and if price is able to close above 939.20, 939.20 is the center of its bullish structured profile. That would then signal to you that price wants to make a move to the top of the profile, 1070. Do we have that signal right now? We do not. But what we do know is support is held. Volume today, 15 million shares, um, you know, moved higher on January 31st with... 34 million shares so looks like it's pulling back on lighter type volume let's go look at those white background charts see if there's any other information here that mike and i need to pay attention to let's go to the daily time frame first now the daily time frame if we can get to it well okay there's a piece of information here so mike you can see that what price did yesterday what price did today got up to that red oscillator and change line that's a bearish message price has held support the bottom of its profile 
that's not a bullish message, but it's not a bearish message out there. So really got to have a little bit of a neutral signal. But here's the problem. What Tesla did was it formed, and it's not so much a problem, but what did Tesla do? It formed a buy the D point pattern and it formed a TD nine count bottom. So the real level of support on Tesla is not the bottom of its daily profile. The real support is the bottom that formed out here that created that um, Three River Morning Star uh, pattern, and that is at 792.01. What I would say is that if price did close below 895, then price should go target that candle, that candle from the trading day of January 28th. Could be the high, could be the low of that candle, but that's where it would target. That's what the daily time frame chart shows. And I think that the daily probably right now is the more important of the three charts we'll look at. Here's the weekly. Weekly shows roads meant to indicator top, which has led to price pulling back into support, which is the bottom of its weekly profile. That is held. The monthly chart out here, if I can get to the monthly chart, what does it show us? Roads meant to indicator top. But price held the top of its monthly profile. So that really gives you kind of a neutral signal. So you got to go with the daily out here. And I'd just be watching uh, eight, uh, first price. I, I mentioned 939.20. And that's really a good close. If price can close above that, it'd be above that red oscillator and change line, above the center of that profile. And that would suggest that move to 1070. So, Mike, I hope that helps you out with regard to Tesla. And uh, thanks so much for the request. The next question and last question that we've got that is uh, come in. This is from Eddie in Boca Raton. And Eddie probably wants to take a look at NVIDIA, but let me see what the message says. NVIDIA hit your projection of, 20, of 259. Where do you see it going from here? Well, let's go see what NVDA, it wasn't my projection. I guarantee you that it was something coming from a chart. So where was 259? Well, that happens to be the top of that daily profile. And that's at 259.35, the high today, 258.17. So your question is, uh, where does it go from here? So let's pull over the white background chart, see if there's anything here, Eddie, to assist us. Um, Okie dokie. So you've got a nice TD9 count bottom. You get a bottom. All that does is says I'm going to go up and test resistance. It's doing that, 259. Um, you could be in a consolidation in between its profiles, between 215 and 259. Uh, the weekly chart, take a quick peek at it, see what it says to us. The weekly chart shows that this could be a TD9 count bottom that's forming out here. It looks more likely than not that it will. So you've got a bottom on the daily, bottom on the weekly. And on the monthly time frame chart with regard to NVIDIA, it's got a TD9 count top, but price has held that green oscillator and change line. So overall, I would say that things here look fairly bullish for NVIDIA. But your battleground that it needs to take out to the upside is that 259.35 level. Uh, let me just look at a quick 30-minute chart out here, see if there's any kind of signal here. And there really isn't. So, you know, the mere fact that it pulled back once it got up to that level, I don't see anything significant, at least not as of yet. But that doesn't mean that we can't be in a consolidation, Eddie. Uh, Volume-wise, with regard to NVIDIA, let's just see what uh, the uh, buyers and sellers are suggesting. So you got pretty good volume. You have 38 million shares as this moved higher. Yesterday's volume inside of NVIDIA was only 51 million shares. So you've got what looks like higher volume than you did yesterday. But nonetheless... The sellers reside at the 259.35 level. We've seen them already take a attack out here and uh, shoot some of those uh, bulls that were trying to buy uh, what looked like a breakout move, and we just don't have that. But if you do close above 259.35, Eddie, I'd say this wants to run to the 275.79 area. So I hope that helps you out. And, uh, well, I'm grateful for your presence as uh, well. Uh, you say, if you have time, can we take a look at Amazon? I did punch Amazon up on the charts uh, earlier, I believe. That has run right into the top of that profile, the weekly profile, that is. Uh, no, I take that back. That was, that was Google we were looking at. So now let's take a look at Amazon. Sorry about that. I got a little memory uh, issue out here, as you can uh, tell. Um, uh, just, just, just kidding. So, in the case of Amazon, I'll have to wait for my white background charts to fire up to see if there was some kind of a bottom pattern that had formed out here. But price above the top of the daily profile, that's twenty nine seventy six. And as long as that holds, Eddie, what we should see is price move higher. Here's the problem: Why did price stop where it did? Turns out that last month, just a few days ago, we saw it close below the bottom of its bullish structured monthly profile. You want to talk about a change in trend signal out here? Well, guess what? You really got that inside of Amazon. As we pull the charts for Amazon back, when was the last time we saw price close below the bottom of a monthly profile? You want to know what the answer is? I believe the answer, give or take, is right around 2008. 2000, that's, that's really kind of interesting, too, isn't it? 
we, the overall thesis that this could be a major top out there, war that sends uh, 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 stocks moving lower out here. Boy, the monthly chart for Amazon. So what did price do? It got up at that 3059 level. It's trying to get back up in there and it has rejected that area. So we'll finish, take a look at Amazon, see if there's anything else on the white background charts out here. But uh, I would say 3059 is your next real key resistance area. Steve Roach with TF and We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, Eddie, what, what, what the Amazon should do, so it's got a nice bottom, Rosemont ind Indicator bottom that uh, formed out here a few days ago. Price closed above the top of the daily profile. Price should make its way up to 3194.69. That's a TD9 count breakdown level. The weekly time frame chart here for Amazon also is going to form a bottom, or it did form a bottom, a TD9 count. The oscillator and change line change colors, so price and the oscillator and change line have a date. That's currently printed at 32.26. So, what Amazon should do is make a move to 3194 to the 3126 level. If we look at the monthly time frame chart out there, we already covered that. That doesn't look so good so far with regard to last month's um, information. If we get a second close below 3059 for the month of February, that spells trouble for Amazon and would suggest to move back to 1626 over time. The yearly chart has a TD nine count topping pattern out there. So it's a, this could just be a nice counter trend rally that is going on inside of Amazon, kind of representative of what is 
going on inside the markets as well. So I hope that helps you out. We do have another question that's come in. This one is coming in from Hector and the fuel injectors. And Hector wants to take a look at the XLF. And Hector says, uh, XLF, how is this looking uh, for a, a bullish bull ride out here? So I've just got the daily time frame chart that I'm going to put up on my screen out here, the white background. And what we can say about the XLF is, is what? I don't really have a bottoming signal other than price pulling back to other swing point levels. So I don't have that. But that doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. Not all patterns are going to form with a bottom. This did form with a TD9 count top out here. But here's what we know right now. And that is that price yesterday closed above the top of the profile. You're getting an extension of that. That would suggest that the XLF wants to continue to move higher out there, Hector. And quickly, we'll throw up our three panel to see uh, XLF. Where is the next resistance level from a profile standpoint? If there is one, and there is not. So the XLF should be able to continue to make a further run higher out there. Folks, thanks so much for joining me here. Thanks for the calls from Brent and from uh, Ron in uh, Denver. All the email requests, those coming in from the Tiger's Den. Folks, stay tuned. You've got two more great hours, your favorite polar bear. David White's up next. Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home. And I'll be back with you on terrific, uh, sometimes thirsty Thursday. Take care, folks.